message of grace is brought to you by Christian people who believe the Bible to be the Word of God and who appreciate its power and authority. Within the pages of the Bible itself, there is a God-given design for its study. Rightly dividing the Word of Truth is the key to understanding the Bible. We're glad you've joined us for another interesting look into God's infallible book as Richard Jordan, President of Grace School of the Bible, presents another in a series of messages designed to help you understand and enjoy the Bible. Let's join them now. Well, we're certainly glad to have you with us today again as we look into the Word of God to study and to seek uh, understanding from what God has to say about His book. Uh, we are going to look again today in our studies at the book of Acts. And as I said last time, the book of Acts is a greatly misunderstood and abused book. In fact, there are three books in the New Testament that are, that are sort of difficult books because of their dispensational nature. There are three transitional books. That is, when you enter in, into the book, you're in one program, and when you, when you get over into the rest of the book, you, you moved into something brand new. New, new things uh, are introduced in the book. Uh, Matthew is one where you move out of the Old Testament economy uh, with just the Law and the Prophets into, into the New Testament economy where, where uh, you don't actually move into the New Testament, but you move into the preaching of, of the Gospel of the Kingdom, the ministry of Christ, and the opportunity uh, of them to hear the, the Kingdom message proclaimed. Now the Kingdom is, is being proclaimed at hand and so forth where previously it wasn't. Then uh, in the book of Hebrews you move from the dispensation. By the way, I left the chart up here this time so that uh, instead of having to draw it again, I'll just use it because we're going to study it again. And we, we are making this program the same night we made the one that you saw last week. When you come into, the New, into Matthew, you're not actually into the New Testament yet, but you're, you're moving the Law and the Prophets were until John. From that time, the Kingdom of God began to be preached. So now the Kingdom message is added to the Law and the Prophets. And then uh, when, when you come to the book of Hebrews, you go from the dispensation of grace, you go from the Old Covenant back here into the New Covenant. That's where you get into the New Covenant there. In the book of Acts, you start in Acts with the kingdom program going on with the Pentecostal signs and wonders demonstrating and then the fall of Israel and salvation going to the Gentiles when you come at, out the end of the book of Acts you're in an entirely new and different dispensation. The book of Acts. So important that you understand uh, the book of Acts. In the book of Acts you see the fall of Israel. You see the program begin. The fall of Israel take place in God's reason for sending salvation to the Gentiles apart from Israel. You see why God changed the program. Now listen, listen. Instead of being the standard for the normal activity of the Christian life and the activity of the body of Christ in the dispensation of grace, rather than being the norm and the standard, the book of Acts is a book that is written to demonstrate why the program that began in Acts no longer is being carried on. Why it is that that program that began in Acts has been interrupted and done away with temporarily and replaced by a new program that you find in Paul's epistles. Why is that, why is that change take place? Why is that difference there? Well, rather than con constituting a, a pattern for us to, to follow the dispensation of grace, the book of Acts explains why the program that began in, in, in early Acts and was carried on there has passed away. And the book of Acts confirms the declaration of Paul's epistles over here that the fulfillment of prophecy has for the, for the, 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 the time being been postponed and uh, it, it, it's given way to the, the carrying out of God's purpose in the mystery. So you have prophecy coming along here and then prophecy is interrupted. The dispensation of grace takes its place and that interruption takes place during the book of Acts. Now it's important to understand uh, the book of Acts and, and in order to do that you really kind of need to be able to outline it in your mind. Now, we've talked to you about rightly dividing the Word, outlining the Scripture, making the divisions and the distinctions the way God does. I tried to show you in Ephesians chapter 2. That's where this chart comes from. All this chart is, this is not, this is not Schofield, this is not Larkin, this isn't Jordan, this isn't uh, Strong or Dabney or Hodge or somebody like that system. It's not some system uh, of, of theology. This is just taking the words of the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11 to 13 and putting them up here on the chalkboard the way the words uh, uh, would identify themselves if you grafted them out. You've got time past where the distinction and God and the basis of God's dealing is the distinction between the circumcision and the uncircumcision. That distinction takes 
carries on. That's the way God deals with men through up, up and through the early part of the book of Acts. Then you have the fall of Israel, a change in the program, where the fall of Israel, through the fall of Israel, salvation goes to the Gentiles, and you find that in Paul's epistles and through Paul's ministry. It's not until you come to the ministry of the Apostle Paul in your Bible that you find the ground level and salvation going to the Gentiles apart from the instrumentality of Abraham and his uh, chosen seed. So when you come to Paul, you don't need to be a part of a special nation. You don't need to be a part of a special religion. You don't need to bless Israel. You don't, you, in here, all you need to come to God is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ who died at Calvary to pay for everything that's wrong with you. That's a wonderful thing. That's called grace. All that God is free to do for you through the finished work of Jesus Christ at Calvary. One day, God's purpose in the dispensation of grace will be over with. And when it is, He'll take the body of Christ out, back out to heaven to be with Him. And then He'll fulfill, He'll, he'll finish his purpose that he has started back over here, he'll bring to completion his prophetic purpose in the ages to come, just as he'll take the body of Christ and use us in the heavenly places. We're a heavenly people. He'll take Israel and make them his earthly people once again and fulfill his promise and purpose with them. Now, that is, is just Ephesians chapter 2. When you come to the book of Acts, because it is such a controversial book, and because there is so much misuse of the book of Acts. I mean, there are people going into all the... They, they just go through Acts with a fine-tooth cone and try to find screwball kind of ways of using verses in it, really, just to be honest with you. And you, you stay tuned. We're going to study through the book of Acts quite closely. And we're going to see the things that go on on the day of Pentecost and the difference between what goes on at Pentecost in the Bible and what goes on in... in uh, uh, modern day Christendom in the name of Pentecost. And you'll see a lot of difference in that. And uh, that, So because it is controversial, if you're going to outline Acts, it would be real safe to go let the Bible outline it for you. And so I want to I give you today an outline of the book of Acts that comes out of the Scripture itself. And it's found in Romans chapter number 11. It, it's fascinating that your whole New Testament... Every time, every time you want light on how it outlines, you'll find it in the book of Romans. It, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, in, in Romans chapter 15, verse number 8, Jesus Christ is said to be a minister to the nation Israel of the circumcision. Romans 15, 8 will explain Matthew to John where it fits on the chart. Romans chapter 11, verse 11 and 12 will explain the book of Acts. Romans 11, 13 will explain where we are today. Paul said, I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. And Romans 11, verse 25 through 27 will explain to you that God is not through with Israel today. You and I are not spiritual Israel. We have not replaced God's chosen nation back there. God has interrupted His purpose with them, but one day will fulfill it. Romans 15, 25 says, I would not have you to be ignorant, concern, brethren, concerning this mystery. I don't want you to be ignorant about this secret, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. We go out and so then all Israel shall be saved as it is written. God's going to do exactly what He wrote down back there and said He would do. Give them their land and so forth, just like the, uh, the Scriptures have said. So Romans, when you come to Paul's epistles, he says, look, now the change has taken place and let me explain all this to you. And so the book of Romans gives you these keys about how, to, how these things fit and where they fit on the chart. Well, Romans 11, verse 11 and 12 is a key passage in understanding and outlining the events of the book of Acts. So look at it with me. Romans 11, 11. I say then, have they, and that's Israel, stumbled that they should fall. God forbid. That is, have they stumbled that they should fall. Now you know what it is to stumble. If you walk along and then you, you trip and you stumble, you kind of lose your balance, but you catch yourself. You don't fall. Uh, just just two, a couple of days ago, my secretary walking down the steps off the back porch at our office, and, and she, she fell off the last step. She, she missed, she was carrying some boxes, and she missed the bottom step, and she fell down on the ground and got a big goose egg on her head. Now, she didn't stumble, but she fell. She stumbled and fell. This passage says, have they, have they stumbled that they should fall? No. In other words, there is a point in time when the nation Israel stumbles but does not fall. 
Then it says, but rather through their fall salvation has come to the Gentiles. And somebody says, well, Brother Rick, what in the world does that mean? He says, they stumble, but they didn't fall. But then they, then they fell. Now, I'm not going to fall on the floor because if I hit the floor, I might not get up. But you understand, you understand what I'm saying. They stumble and they don't fall. And then he says, but then they fell. So what I'm looking for are, th are, are a couple of things. I'm looking for a time when Israel stumbles but doesn't fall. And then I'm looking for a time when they do fall, and through their fall, salvation goes to the Gentiles. And then verse 12 says, Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles. So I'm looking for three things. I'm looking for a time when they stumble and don't fall. Then a time when they fall, and then they diminish away. And salvation goes to the Gentiles because of it. Now come back with me to Romans chapter 9. Let's, let's start at the beginning. Romans 9, is there a time in Israel's history when they stumble but don't fall? Well, there is. Romans 9, verse 33. Romans 9, verse uh, 33. I'll uh, begin reading in verse 32. Wherefore, because they, that is Israel, sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. There is only one time in the history of the nation Israel that God Almighty laid a, a, a rock and a stumbling stone in Israel for them to stumble, stumble over, and that's, the, that's in, the, in the first coming of Jesus Christ in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus Christ back here was a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, as in 1 Peter chapter number 2. It's very clear that He is the one they stumble over. And that's why the verse says, Whosoever believeth on Him, the rock is a person. Israel stumbled at the Lord Jesus Christ when He came and was presented to the nation Israel in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John as their king, as, as the suffering servant of Jehovah, as, uh, the, as uh, my servant the man, the, 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 man, the branch who is a man, as God manifest in human flesh. We studied Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four pictures of Christ to the nation Israel. As He was presented to the nation Israel back here, they stumbled over Him, and when they stumbled over Him, they crucified Him. They rejected him, and they wound up murdering their Messiah. They wound up crucifying, with wicked hands, crucifying the Lord Jesus Christ, who was manifested in their midst by mighty signs and wonders that God did by him, manifested to be their Messiah. So they did stumble at Calvary. They stumbled at, at, the, at the coming of Christ. They did it because they weren't, see, they weren't walking by faith. Had, had Israel back here been walking by faith, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Had they been walking by faith, when the living Word of God showed up, what would they have done? They would have believed Him. But because they weren't walking by faith, they didn't believe Him when He came. They didn't believe His words. They didn't believe His works. They didn't believe the testimony God the Father gave to Him. They, they were in unbelief. So they stumbled. Now the verse says, have they stumbled that they should fall? No. They stumble and crucify the Lord Jesus Christ, but they do not fall because of Calvary. You remember what Jesus Christ did? He hung on Calvary's cross and He cried, Father, what? Forgive them, for they know not what they do. You know what Jesus Christ did? He pled for the nation Israel hanging on Calvary's cross and pled that God the Father would forgive them. God Almighty had blinded them so that they would crucify the Lord Jesus Christ. God having an intent and a purpose that He hadn't made known uh, to, to, to reside in the death of His Son, used the nation Israel, blinded them because of their unbelief, and used them to crucify the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, he, they, don't stum they, they stumble, but they don't fall. In other words, there is a renewed opportunity going to be given, another opportunity going to be given to Israel to repent. John, Christ, the twelve, had called them to repentance. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So now, 
He, he's resurrected. He ascends into heaven. The Holy Spirit comes on the apostles. And in the early Acts period in here, they go out and give to the nation Israel a, a, a renewed opportunity to repent and an opportunity literally to receive the kingdom that God had promised them. Acts chapter 3, Peter says to them that all the things which the prophets had declared back here, that, uh, that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Repent you therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he'll send Jesus Christ back, which before is preached unto you, whom the heaven receive, must receive until the time of restitution of all things, spoken by the mouth of all the holy prophets since the world began. That's the way you start the book of Acts. Now, where are we at? Romans 11. Have they stumbled that they should fall? They stumble here, but they don't fall. God forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Well, I know something. From the time of Calvary all the way over here to some point in the book of Acts when they fall, there's, that program back there is still going on. Now, when do they fall? Come with me to Acts chapter number, number 7. Acts chapter number 7. In Acts chapter number 7, Stephen is standing before the, the uh, religious leaders of the nation Israel, the Senate and Council of Israel. We call it the, uh, or they call it the Sanhedrin. And in Acts chapter 7, he's indicting the nation Israel for their unbelief and their, their refusal to repent. Not only have they crucified Christ, but now they've rejected the witness of the Spirit of God in the apostles. And he says to them in Acts 7, 51, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do you. Notice what he calls them. He says, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. These are the circumcised, they, they're circumcised with the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, but they don't have the circumcision of the heart, the one that counted. You see, the outward circumcision back here was only to be the outward expression of the inward faith. And what happens here is God Almighty concludes the nation Israel in unbelief and unbelieving Israel and they're set aside and they, as he pronounces that judgment on the national leaders of Israel in Jerusalem, this declaration to Israel's leaders uh, is considered to be the official rejection of God. He concludes Israel through its leaders in unbelief and there is there are no more opportunities ever extended in the book of Acts to the people in Jerusalem, the leaders in Jerusalem, to ever have their kingdom once again. You know the next thing that happens? You come right over right after that in Acts 9, and you've got Saul of Tarsus gets saved over here, right here. And you know what he's told? You come over to Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter number 22. Acts chapter 22, verse number 17, it came to pass, Paul is talking about uh, the time period of Acts 9. He's giving his testimony here. And he says in Acts 22, 17, it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. And he saw, uh, and he, uh, and saw him, that's Christ, saying unto me, Make haste, get thee out, get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. You see, the Apostle Paul's ministry begins with the assumption that Israel will not receive the testimony. His ministry begins with the assumption that Israel has fallen. He says, leave them. Where is he to go? Verse 22, he said unto me, depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. There's the fall of Israel and salvation going to the Gentiles apart from Israel. So I got, I know, I, I, it's no problem to understand what's going on. They stumble, but they don't fall. That's Calvary. But then they do fall. That's Acts 7. And through their fall, salvation goes to the Gentiles. They fall in Acts 7. The result is God saves Paul and sends him out to the Gentiles. And then in Romans 11, Verse 12, it says, talks about the diminishing of them. That is, through this period of Acts, as, as we draw that line down here between Acts, when, when Paul gets saved here in Acts 28, there is a diminishing of Israel. There is a period in there where God, He no longer deals through them. He no longer is going to deal through the nation. 
He set, he, that he's taken away from them their privileged position of being the circumcision. And now they are considered uncircumcised. They're considered to be cut off right down here with uncircumcised Gentiles. But God does deal with them because there is a remnant in Israel, in unbelieving Israel, that He wants to get saved and made members of the church, the body of Christ. That group of people for whom the wrath of God was the only thing they had to look, God in His grace offers them an opportunity to get into the, to this new program. The only thing that held the wrath of God back from them was this new program. So there is this diminishing state, and as we're going to see as we go through the studies, that diminishing period in, Acts, in, 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 uh, in, the, uh, in, in the latter part of the book of Acts, that gives an opportunity for God to in, lay out an indictment on the nation Israel for their unbelief and their rejection. So what you have in, in Acts is you have, you have, it starts back in Matthew. Christ comes. The prophets had prom promised that God would bring salvation and blessing to the nations through the nation Israel. Christ calls them to repentance. John calls them to repentance to receive the Messiah. Christ calls them to repentance. The twelve call them to repentance. Israel rejects that. They crucify Christ. God, He prays, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And God Almighty gives them a renewed opportunity of repentance. Sends the Holy Spirit back. Takes His Son back on, uh, into heaven as a royal exile. Sends His Holy Spirit back on the apostles. And the Spirit of God goes out. Look at here. God the Father called Israel to repentance through John the Baptist. Jesus Christ, God the Son, called Israel to repentance. They allowed John the Baptist to be beheaded by Herod. They demanded Pilate to behead, to, to crucify the Lord Jesus Christ. Now God the Holy Spirit comes and testifies and calls the nation to repentance through the, uh, through the little flock in here, the twelve apostles and, the, and the, the Pentecostal circumcision believers, and they actually go out and commit murder. They, they reject the testimony of, of the Spirit of God through Stephen, and Stephen, a man full of the Holy Ghost, is actually murdered by Israel. The increasing of their guilt through there as they reject God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and in anybody's ball game, three strikes and you're out, three outs and the inning's over. So they fall, and then they diminish away as God brings in the new program over here. Now folks, it's important to understand that the, the fall of Israel results in the reconciling of the world. Romans chapter 11, verse 15. For if the, if the casting away of them, of unbelieving Israel, be the reconciling of the world. That is, when God set Israel aside, what happened is that the status of the world out here, the, un, the Gentiles were already cut off. Now Israel is cut off. Everybody's cut off. He's concluded them all in unbelief that He might have mercy on all. And that's where you and I come in. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 17 talking about this new creature in Christ, this body of Christ, this new thing God is forming in here. This one new man. He says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, Therefore if any man be in Christ, and that, that'll be the, the Ephesians 2.13, but now in Christ. If any man, back here you could be in Christ, but only these you had to be one of these people to get in him. Now over here, anybody, Jew, Gentile, bond or free, anybody, but now in Christ Jesus, you who sometime are far from made not. What happens? If any man now is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That has to do with your identity. Listen to me. That verse of Scripture has to do with your identity in Christ, not your behavior but your identity of who you are in Christ Jesus, who God has now made you in Christ. When he says the old things have passed away, this old system back here, the old creation, who you were in Adam, who you were in yourself, and so has passed away, and now you are in Christ. A man came to my office just recently, and he said, Brother Jordan, I'm an alcoholic. And I said, look, quit defining yourself on the basis of your failures. Quit defining yourself on the basis of your old man, of your, of your sin. Define yourself the way God does. You're, a, you're not an alcoholic. You're a new creature in Christ. 
Now you might be drinking and you might be a drunkard, but you're a son of God. You're not back here, you're in here. You see that? It's your identity in Christ he's talking about. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Who are you? You're a new you're part of this new thing God's creating in here. The one new man, the church, the body of Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You see, Jesus Christ died at Calvary, gave his life for you. So that when you trusted him, he could give his life to you. Make you part of something brand new. So that then he could live his life through you. It's Christ living in me. That's the issue. That's what the Christian life's all about. Verse 18. All things are of God. The things aren't of me, they're of God. Who, now watch, hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world in himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed to us the word of reconciliation. My job, your job today is to go out and preach about this reconciliation program God has established here. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead be you reconciled to God. That's the, jo That's the job of the church, the body of Christ today. The job of the church, the body of Christ, is not to try to go back to Pentecost. It's not to go back and try to reclaim some program back there in a past in dispensation that God isn't operating today. The job of the body of Christ, the job of you and I as believers today, listen, my job, your job, is as an ambassador for Christ, as a member of this new creation that God has going on today, is to go out out and offer a message of be ye reconciled to God through the finished work of Jesus Christ at Calvary because verse 21 says for God made him to be sin for us the one who knew no sin was made my sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him and that's why he says in chapter 6 verse 1 we then as workers together with God beseech you that you receive not the grace of God in vain don't get in that program without it having some impact on your life well, the time's gone. Till next time, Maranatha. Thank you, Brother Jordan, for that message from the Word of God. Friends, we have a cassette tape that we'd like you to have to go along with today's study. The tape is entitled, An Outline That Works. It's yours free of charge. It's our way of saying thanks for listening. We'll be happy to see that you receive your free copy along with a free subscription to our monthly Bible study, The Grace Journal, if you simply write us here at The Message of Grace. The address should be on your screen. That's The Message of Grace, Box 97, Bloomingdale, Illinois, 60108. If you prefer, you can also call us during normal business hours at area code 708-529-0520. Request tape offer number 178. That's tape offer number 178. The Message of Grace is a ministry of Grace School of the Bible, and we're glad you've been with us here today. If our study together has been a help to you, we would be happy to put you in touch with a Bible study in this area where the message of God's wonderful grace is proclaimed for His rightly divided word. And friend, if you're still not sure of salvation, that your sins are forgiven, and that you have eternal life as a present possession, let us know, and we'll be happy to send you some gospel literature that will show you the way. That address again is the Message of Grace, Box 97, Bloomingdale, Illinois, 60108. Thanks for being with us today, and God's best until we meet next time for another Message of Grace.